media. Though I will check those forms. Be on your feet. What about technical? Have you given them form? Let's be on our feet. Luke chapter 6, 47 to 49. You will take verse 47, I will take 48. I will take 47, you take 48, and we take 49 together. Can we have it, please? Let's be on our feet. Everybody rise up in honor of God's word. The Bible says God exalts his word above his name. Whoever comes to me and hears my, my, hears my sayings, and does them. Follow this reading. I will show you whom he is like. Now you read verse 48. Verse 48. Let's go one to one. Let's go. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Let's read verse 49 together. One, two, and let's go. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Heavenly Father, we trust you today for a word from you that everyone that has come to your presence today we go home with an instruction. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Now be seated. Before we begin to share this particular scripture. I want to tell you my focus today. Now, in, ma in marigmatics today, I want to show you how as a child of God, you can solve the problems that you encounter in your marital life. Now, I want to show you how we, now we've we been married yesterday clock 23 years, or 20, uh, 22 years. Now, we've, been having, we've had several challenges. I want to show you as children of God, how do you manage any challenge that tries to hit your home? I had this parable during this week, and I want to quote it before I come back to that scripture. Now, that man of God said, there is no problem in any house that is not a joke in another house. Now, which means, what a person calls a big problem is a joke in another family. Which means when you if you share your problems, you'll be shocked that the problem you are sharing that you are saying, ah, this problem is so big. It's just like a tip of the eye, you know, it's like a pinch of salt in another family when they begin to share theirs. You know why we shared the scripture that we read? There are three major truths from this scripture that I want us to really pick. How many? Three. Now, what's the first truth I saw in this scripture? Look at this. The same attack that came to the unbeliever will also come to the believers. Now, which means salvation in Christ does not exempt us from battles. Let me come again. Salvation in Christ does not exempt us from battles. Be a young fire from Christy. Oh, there any day, ni no in la no long, kuni, kuma baogun pade. Am I communicating? Salvation in Christ does not exempt us from facing challenges. I can change the word from battles to challenges. Salvation does not mean you will not meet obstacles on your way. That's why if you look at that scripture we read, both the person that heard the word, believed the word, acted on the word. The Bible says the building they built 
What happened? The wind came against it. The stream came against it. In fact, the Bible says it came against it vehemently, which means it was serious. Now, that's the first thing I want you to know. Because some of you begin to say, eh, maybe it's because I gave my life to Christ that things are like, you know, that I'm facing certain challenges. No. The same challenge that you are born again does not mean that challenges will not be thrown towards your direction. Register that. Second truth, I will explain as I go on. I just want you to write this down. Second truth, it is your obedience to God that will make you do the things that will make your foundation to be strong, to be able to conquer battles. Now, I come again. Your, it is your obedience to God that makes you do the things that makes yourself, your foundation strong. Igbono, you know, Christy, please stand for me. Now, that will make you do the things that will make us, your foundation strong enough to be able to withstand those challenges. I found that too in that scripture. Your obedience to the word of God is what will make you do the things that will make your foundation strong enough to be able to withstand the battles and challenges you face. Write this down. I've not yet started preaching. I just want you to take these three notes, then we'll begin to expand. Number three. Should I go on? What people build won't survive the storm if they do not follow the instructions of God. I will explain. What people build won't survive the storm if they do not follow the instructions of the Lord. Now, with these three things I've written, please write fast. I, I have a lot of talking to do. And while I begin to share, listen, if you have any question that you feel requires immediate answer, just write it, give it to the, any of the ushers, and I will answer you by the grace of God. Now, in today's teaching, look up church. I want us all to agree to see now that those that obey the word of God and those that choose not to obey, we say believers and non-believers face the same kind of battles. We are talking about you building a home that will last. Building a kind of home that will face challenges and conquer challenges. The reality of life is that whether you pray or not, whether you fast or not, whether you are born again or not, challenges will definitely come. That's the beauty of life. That's one of the things I want you to understand. But in this service, church, I want to share one of our practical experience. And I will show you ways by which we conquered a battle. We will now use it, you know, in every other aspect of our lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. Every battle raging against your home, raging against your life, shall fail in the name of Jesus. The wicked will not rise over you. They will not rejoice over you. Now, many years ago when we got married, I love saying this because it's a major testimony in my life. We got married. I stood on the altar. I came to the church. I prayed and I told everybody, praise the Lord. I'm married now. In nine months' time, you all will come join me to celebrate the arrival of our first child. Everybody dance with me. You know how we talk when the faith that is born in the heart is strong. I was rejoicing and dancing that day. Everybody danced with me. But beloved, the first year of our marriage, there was no show. Second year of our marriage, there was no show. Third year of our marriage, beloved, there was no show. Now, it now started to hit my mind. Lord, what is going on? Father, what, why, why are there no children in this marriage? Will the members not begin to see me as a fake prophet? That I stood in front of the church, I stood on the altar, and I told them, nine months after my marriage, come on, you will come rejoice with me. Hear me. 
three years, we were still waiting until I began to do the right thing. Now, you too may be facing challenges in one aspect of your life or the other. Listen, there is a way Christians, believers in Christ, there is a way we handle challenges. When challenges come, there are ways we handle them and we become overcomers. Let's look at those ways one after the other. That's why that scripture I showed you, he said, to them that hear the word of God and believe the word of God and act upon the word of God, he said they are laying the, found, they are the foundation of their house on a solid rock. But he didn't say that they lay it on the solid rock, the wind will not blow against it. He didn't say that they lay it on the solid rock, the, 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 the stream will not blow. The storm will blow against it. The wind will blow against it. But because it's on the rock, the Bible says, Jesus himself said, it will stand. Then those ones that did not believe what the word of God says, they also built. They too were building. It could be marriage, they are building. It could be destiny, they are building. Now, the same wind came against it. The same stream came against it. But the Bible says it collapsed. It means that it is your ability to handle situations in God's way that makes you a victor. See I hear. Your ability to what? Handle situations in God's way. So how did we come out of that trouble? So that you can learn how to come out of whatsoever trouble facing your marriage or facing your life. Number one, hear me. The first important principle in getting solution from God is hope. Everybody say hope. It's a four letter word. H O P E. In Yoruba, we call it iriti. Listen, the day your faith dies is the day you stop getting anything from God. All those years that there was no children, no child in our house, you know what? We didn't give hope. We didn't give up. We didn't look at ourselves and say, okay, maybe the way it is, maybe we should go and begin to plan on how to bring our family, the, our family members, let's take them as our children, let's see how to go to motherless and fatherless babies' home, take them as our children. We, we weren't looking for alternatives. We were still hopeful. No matter what you face, no matter what you experience, you must make sure that your expectation will, does not die. How do I know this? In James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. Look at James chapter 1, from verse 5 to verse 8. I love this encounter of James. James chapter 1, from verse 5 to verse 8. Let's have it on screen. Let's have it on screen. Let's have it on screen. Sagada Baskele. While they bring the, okay, they say already. James chapter 1 from verse 5. Look at the scripture. It says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. Now, this is a teaching on how to ask. Verse 6. He said, but let him ask in what? In what? In faith. What is faith? An, ev an assurance of things hoped for, an evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is that assurance that your hope, what you are hoping for, will come to pass. Which means, without hope, there is no faith. Now, one of the reasons why so many people cannot overcome their present challenge is that their hope is dead. Once your hope dies, you are disconnected from God. Look at it. He said, let him ask in faith with no doubting. I love this. With no doubting. For he who doubts is what? what? Is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. He who doubts is like a wave. Driven around like a wind. He said, let not that man do what? Suppose that he will receive anything from God. No matter the challenges you are facing, Jesus did not tell us that we won't face challenge. The promise he gave us is that it won't prevail over us. Your hope must not die. Sherry, time, 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 time
never got to a point we ask ourselves that, are you sure we are going to have a child? Every marriage that is here, hear me. Don't lose hope in God. No matter what that challenge is, don't lose hope in God. If your own uh, 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 battle is finance, don't lose hope. If your own battle is one thing or the other, the, you must just make sure. Uh, listen, as long as your hope is alive, your God is still active. Our hope was alive. We never gave up. I wrote here, we never lose hope in God's ability to give us our own children. And I wrote here, what's your marriage crisis? I remember one of our, our, our dicknesses. She's now abroad. Her husband too is abroad. She was the only one doing business that time. And her business was doing well. She was into fashion in, in the fashion industry. The husband said, uh, was into business. Now, and they had this land. She managed to go to cooperative, gathered money, they bought the land. She got to cooperative again, gathered money, they bought blocks. And she put the blocks on the site, believing that one day they will build their own house. You know what the husband did? He went to the party one day. From there, went to site. Counted the blocks, 500. Went back to the party. Collected the money of the blocks. <laughs> And told his friend to go and pack it. It was during convention like this. The woman said she was frustrated. She was looking at, I don't know, I don't, I think I will quit this marriage. When one of our guest speakers just pointed to her and said, Madam, God said I should tell you that concerning your husband, stop crying, start rejoicing. Ah, how will I rejoice when the man is making me to cry? And thank God she obeyed. She stopped crying. She started rejoicing. As she was rejoicing, the man was changing. As she was rejoicing, the man was changing. As she was rejoicing, the man was changing. Changing out. Changing positively. Until the man got to the point where he took his place as the home gyre, the provider of his family. Do not allow your hope to die. The devil will raise those storms. You know why he's raising the storm? He's raising the storm because he wants to kill your hope. He knows that as long as you are hopeful in Christ, help will come true for you. I declare in the name of Jesus, every battle steered up against your home begins to fail in the name of Jesus. Don't forget the book of James. He said a double-minded person so, which means the moment you begin to conclude in your heart, are you sure we are going to come out of this? Are you sure we can conquer this battle in my family? Are you sure we can conquer it? I don't think we can conquer it. Once you zero your mind, you, you cut off from the supply. You know what hope is to the Christian? Hope is what ATM is to the owner of an account. You know, you are going out, you don't have your checkbook. You have your ATM and you go to the machine. That's what your hope is. It connects you. As they put it in, put your pin, you can have access to your cash. Don't lose hope. No matter the challenge, this formula I'm teaching you now, please apply this same principle in every case you face in your home. Don't lose hope. Is it in a battle against your children? Don't lose hope. Those children that are making you feel sorrowful today will still bring you joy. I didn't hear your email. Yeah. <laughs> but once you give or you, you lose hope, what you have done, you have told God, I hands off. Let the devil come in. But once your hope is active, 
Shagada Base. Jesus, our Lord, he was going for a ministration. Some people got called him, Master, Master, Master. There is one man. This man is close to us. He's a very nice man. So this man even built a synagogue for us. Oh, did the synagogue look And this man, one of his servants is very, very sick. This man wants you to come to his house. Sir, sir, please come to this man's house and play for his servant. The Bible says, as Jesus started to go, the man sent message. He said, I'm a man of authority. I am also under authority. I am in authority. I know what it means to speak a word and people will receive, we carry it out. Sir, you don't need to come to my house. Speak one word. You know what Jesus said? He said, I've been moving around the ministry. I have never seen anyone who has faith like this man. And right from where he stood, he said, your servant is old. And instantly, he was old. Don't lose hope. I say to you, it shall be well with you. If your family is down today, your family will arise. Say, I see my family arising. I didn't hear. Say, I see my family arising. Our second formula, learn from it. I will only tell you three. Tell you one or two things and we, we go to Thanksgiving. The second formula we applied and we are still applying till today in conquering battles. Hello? We applied the principle, write it down, of the widow that went to seek the church. The principle of the widow that went to seek the church. The principle of the widow that went to seek the church. The principle of the widow that went to seek the judge. Now, and what is that widow's principle? Luke chapter 18, from verse 1 to 8. Luke chapter 18. Formula 1, it will work in any marriage. Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. Please be fast. Sagada, the label say, Knicker, you are not doing me well today. This sound is not proper. Can we read one, two, and let's go? Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. Verse 2. Saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Yet, because this widow troubles me, ah, you have jumped from verse 2 to 5. What happened? You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Every fast forward spirit, get out of your life. Whoever is there. <laughs> now there was a widow in that city. Look at this. And she came to him saying, get justice for me. For my adversary. Get justice for my adversary. Verse 4. Verse 4. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man. Verse 5. I do not fear God. I do not regard man. But look at the widow's principle. Verse 5. Yet, because this widow does what? Troubles me. Now, what is the, the widow's principle? I wrote here, pray, praying persistently was her principle. And listen, we applied that in our marriage. Ah, Igbata and Woju alone for more. We were not going from mountain to mountain. No. no. We were taking our time, holding our hands. I remember one day, during our prayer and fasting, the year that God decided to answer us, we were fasting like this in September. And I told everybody, come to, join her husband and wife, join your hands together and pray concerning the problem of your house. And our house that year, there was no child. So I joined hands with my wife. We were on the altar. That time we were at Adeniji Street. Let's begin to pray. Do you know that as I was praying, Father, I'm trusting you. Ah, we are trusting you in our family. For a girl, I was hearing my wife was saying, I'm trusting you, Lord, for a boy. Ah. She was praying for a, a boy. I was praying for a girl. And as at that time, we could not afford to have twins. So, we God give us one child with two, two sex. So, I had God clearly say, son, stop these prayers. I will not answer it. Ah. I will not answer it. 
He said, until both of you agree. So I said, I, I told her, I said, stop. I said, you're asking for a boy. He said, yes. But I'm asking for a girl. She said, why am I asking for a girl? I said, I'm asking for a girl because when you have girls as firstborn, that is my philosophy. I'm not saying by Blicker now. When you have girls as firstborn, you have good managers at home. They can risk. So I succeeded to convince her and we agreed again. Oh yeah, let's pray. Father, we are trusting you. We are trusting you. We are... Do you know that after that prayer meeting that night, when I get to the third point, I will tell you what to do. After that prayer meeting that night, God showed her an instruction of what to do. Listen, anything you are still praying about is a clear sign that you believe that God can still do. But anything you decide not to pray about is a clear sign that you have given up over. Are you still praying about this? I've had so many people tell me like that. Are you still praying about this? It's a clear sign that you have given up. You have given up. And once you have lost hope, you have disconnected from the channels of miracles. The Bible says, the judge said, even if I don't fear God, ah, this widow will kill me with, keep, with, with continuously coming to my presence. Some of you have given up. You are no longer praying about your husband. You are no longer praying for your wife. You are no longer praying for your child. You are no longer praying for your marriage. So, well, well anything that happens, let it happen. May you not see trouble. Ah, echo your amen where you know we are we are pastors we are the ones that hear cases sir you will hear some case you won't even know what to cancel so we applied that principle of praying i remember the, the children that god gave me i received those three names in my prayer place it's matching that Lord, Lord, this is your covenant. This is what the word of God says. This is what you promised me. This and this and this and this. Ah, Lord, Lord, according to your, when I just finished praying, I will hear write this name down. So, no matter what that challenge is, please don't stop praying. Did you hear me? Don't stop praying. Your prayers will be answered. Take number three. Number three. The third principle we applied to conquer that battle. As we prayed, we opened our ears for instructions from God and godly people. Ah, take note of that. As we prayed, we opened our ears. Alai bashinga dua alai tiwa. See, Tony, lati your door, Lord, at Mima. As we prayed, we opened our ears for instructions from God and godly men. Now, I was saying something while I was when I was talking about prayer. That that night, as we finished praying, Bashik Badura Ton, fasting and prayer, ni Agbadua Yen, Agdua Yen Le. But that is the day that God chose. Are you following me? That God chose. My wife slept and she saw an elderly man in the dream came to her and said to her, My daughter, you have done everything. But take this thing. Go and use it. You shall be pregnant. Oh, mommy. She said when she collected it, it was the root of a tree. She woke up. She tapped me. This is the dream I got. As she told me the dream, I said, God is saying something. God is saying something. You know one of the reasons why several children of God pray, they don't have miracles. They pray, they don't listen to instruction. Pray with a closed eyes, open ear. Don't pray with closed eyes, closed ears. 
Esa, I wrote their names down. All the medical doctors that God used for us, because he got to a stage, God led us to doctors. The first one is Dr. Philip. He's a pastor with New Covenant Church. That's the vine, vine, the vine hospital. The second one, Dr. Emmanuel, is a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. That's a delight hospital. The third one, Dr. Lasukami, is a pastor with a, 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 a what's it, Winners Chapel. That's uh, uh, what's the name of his hospital again? Uh, uh, Gilead Hospital. These are the three men that God used for us. You know why I'm sharing these testimonies? Some of you, you are praying, but you expect that God's invisible hand will just come down and say, Solution to our Open your ears, both to the Spirit of God. And to godly men. Let them counsel you. Sir, we followed counseling. Our problem has become testimony. Our issue has become miracle. We are going somewhere. Are you only praying? Do you listen? Now, some of you are praying, Lord, my husband, my husband is tough. My husband is this. My husband is that. You pray, Lord, change him. Lord, change my wife. But even after praying, who do you listen to? Ah, the first doctor that talked to us, after they did scan for my wife, they said, that's Dr. Philip, New Covenant Church pastor. He said, Pastor, I'll need to do some. Let's, let's just wash her womb. Let's wash everything. I've never had it as a den. I met her as a virgin. The doctor said, let's, let's just flush. Because she wasn't seeing a menstrual flow at all. And the doctor said, if she cannot see it, there is no how she will be pregnant. It was after he did his that God connected us to Dr. Emmanuel. Abi? No, Dr. Soji. See, your pastor is not just a man of faith with a closed ear. So. Your pastor is a man of faith that listens to instruction. I want to ask you, who is talking to you? If you notice that a battle is prolonging, something is wrong. You don't only need prayer to solve it. Now listen, look up. Let me tell you one very weird story. Thank God she's in church. Married to her husband. Blessed with two sons. Imagine, her husband just got home one day and told her, my wife, I've packed. I don't know If you still want to remain my wife, come and join me in the new house. And can I tell you, I've married another wife. And she rushed to my office. Crying. Yeah, Jamie, oh, yeah, you know how you women do now. Yeah, Jamie, yeah, Jamie, yeah, Jamie. You know, yeah, Jamie, she explained. My wife's office was downstairs, my was upstairs. She explained. And when Martha reached to a point, my wife told her, Let's go up. Let's go and meet our father in the Lord. And they came to my office. And she was telling me everything. And while she was talking, God said to me, Son, tell her to follow her husband. Because her conclusion, she was talking as at that time, the way she was crying is that so that she can rent a house, you know, so that we can encourage her to rent a house. Do I want to take a second wife? No, now. Did I chase my own wife out? No, now. But God said, tell her, follow the man. Ah, Munima, Umutimu Magomari. 
Uluani, follow your husband. E she ma wa kolo bi alejo. Obinrin mi ti wa nbe, a te joji alati le. Emi o mo yen o. Ohun Oluwa ti mo go ni pe, follow your husband. Touch your neighbor, say, listen to cancer, listen to cancer, touch it, touch it. Bans, okay, shuk, maje kukun yek pe. Even when you see status, okay, brother, kong kong wa, are you, is this, are you sure kong wa? Are they the target? Chi video le fe shi avi? Go and watch their history. One more thing, what In their struggling years, but some of you are in a TV video, Larry. So you are now waiting for a David in the kingdom. There's no David in the kingdom. <laughs> David, you are no kingdom. Some of you are not listening to cancer. Shelo, is it the will of God? Some delay are caused by some of you. I told one of our daughters in church. She was due for marriage. I've prayed her into some relationships. But they keep breaking. When I ask her questions, you know what I discovered? When they start relationship two months, they start sex. Listen, you cook food, you want to sell it for 5,000 uh, 5, and you say you will sell for 5,000 but I can test until I'm satisfied. Will I need to buy it again? You didn't hear my parable. As soon get a feta. I bought 5,000 new. I want to buy it. I want to test <laughs> I can't believe it. Call him out. I see your job. 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 They will no longer be interested in marriage when they are having sex with you for free. Say counsel. When you pray, you what? Open your ears. So this, our sister, now followed the husband. Ah, the husband was shocked. Oh, okay. The, the husband didn't expect that she would come. The following year, in our prayer and fasting, every September, you know we do fasting every September, on the last day of the fast, God said to me, son, lay your hands upon everybody. That day, the attendance was too many. So I brought the people, I understand what God is saying. I learned from Jethro and Moses. I told our leaders, bring your hands. I anointed, I laid my hands upon each of their hands. Go and lay your hands on the people. It was my wife that got to her. As my wife laid hands on her, she fell down. Da! It was like she died. Erugan by me, but Mobobo Ishubu. Da! Could they did it after party service? If I don't did it after party service, number Corisile. But she didn't want to know. Yeah, what to normal? 
to sile kun ki lomo mi se to wa na bayi iyan ba da un rudli bo ko se jade ni ka o se nri yale e fin ija e ma bere o won na ra won de bi pe sister wa de ra nwo ji won na ra won de bi pe won gbe ra won lo police station from police station arabi en lo won ni gba won ni gba won lo court won wa ti boda mo se o wa kwentu ma bail e iya wo sister wa lo wa lo bail sister wa lo wa lo bail ibi ton tin bail e ni dp office ni dp wa n bail o weke you have this kind fine woman for house you go carry that devil we can lock you up you dey crazy say counsel a lot of you you pray with your ears closed it is your eyes you should close do you know that that yawo from there went to court filed for divorce and div marriage went back to how it used to be now what if as she was praying there was no counselor or if she was counseled she did not follow what would they say they say god did not answer prayers church i'm summarizing that we have victory today barrenness sir number one we did not lose hope number two we're persistent in our prayers number three we prayed and opened our ears we followed counsel at every given point and here we are today to the glory of god if we talk about pampas in the future is for our grandchildren god has taken us off that train i have one question i want to ask and quickly answer because of this time where does the storm that hit the home come from because if the storm hits the believer and also hits the unbeliever in that scripture we read are you following me where did that storm come from was it from God? Answer me. You didn't answer me. Head down now. Ah, what happened? Was it from God? Was it from the devil? Ah. Are you sure it's from the devil? The devil is not the one that brings storm. Mm. I told you I will offend you. Listen, the devil does not have power over any child of God. Because the moment you are born again, you are God's children. You are above him. Say, I'm above. Talk to me, talk to me. Say, I'm above. But you know what the devil usually do? Why I will say partly yes. The devil capitalizes on your carelessness. The storm that you, some of you experience as a result of carelessness some of you before you went into marriage you did not open your eyes very well to investigate who you were getting married to sir the issue of marriage is a, it's an issue of life you need to investigate by yourself very 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 well It is today's generation that two people will meet in church and even get married without their parents, without going to their village. The devil is not powerful. What he does is to capitalize on our carelessness. You fathers, touch this mic for me. Our father, in their own days, look up. Sister, please come. This sister, let's say, is from. Uh, uh, one village in Newi. This brother is from one village in uh, 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 Orifite. Orifite. Yes. And he sees this sister from Newi. You know what they would do? Members of his family would travel to Newi to go and investigate. Do they used to run mad in their family? 
Is there any impotence or barrenness in their family? Hello? They ask questions. This sister's family too, we arise, go to that village to go and find out. But you know what? The problem with our generation now, we are too fast. Even children don't want their parents to know who they are dating. You hear hello? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I used to say, Eniela, come back. <laughs> Sit down. Continue the call in my presence. She's becoming an adult. I have to watch. Pick the call. I'm hearing you. If you I, I ask her, Abby, is that not what I told you? If you bring anybody, don't think I'm the only one that will check. I will send him to Bishop Adilakun. Bishop Adilakun will send him to Bishop Oedeko. Bishop Oedeko will send him to Pastor Adeboe. I ask her, that's what I used to say them in the family. So whoever his pastor is, that these three men don't know, we will know. Listen, you lay your bed well before you lie on it. Thank you. So that's why I say, the devil is not behind the storm. The storm the devil took advantage of what? Our carelessness. Now, apart that from of you did not investigate, some of you, you have some natures that you refuse to conquer. When the man now begins to beat you, you say, ah, my husband beats me, but you, you are, you are a razor blade mouth. You know, say, ah, ah, sir, and there's a storm in my house. When you have natures that you yourself know that, and your people are telling you that you are mudani eh, work on it. You know that some we faced that we're looking for the fruit of the womb. Let me tell you, she loved God to the point that when she gave her life to Christ, the church she joined, she was joining them to fast, like she was licking sweet. Eight days marathon, nine days marathon. 10 days marathon, no food, no water. Igbatoya, Mestra flu e salo ni pea. Obe ni ti fe kwa mi o. Kwa ri nko o shu, man ra ra. A she she wa anfu o wa. You don't know that it is the opening you create that the devil will pass through. Some of you men too, the problem you have, that the, uh, your wife is disrespecting you, your things are not working. It's because some of you are too stingy, and that stinginess in there, even when from when you were a youth, everybody knew you as Akagom. And like you were not one eat everything me. Chebon Luan distorm by Fuen. That's why I see. If you will enjoy marriage, hear me. Work on yourself. Forget about your partner. You just work on yourself. If you are still young, you want to get married. Hear me. After working on yourself, open your eyes very well. Till you get to the altar, you can still say no. Don't let anybody force you into a relationship if you are not convinced. And if you are married, the crisis, if it is becoming life-threatening, me, I used to encourage, please stay aside. Leave the house for him or her. If it's, if it's becoming life-threatening, if the guy is getting to a point, you know, or the woman is getting to a point that they are now having extramarital affairs that can affect you, give way. I advise that. But it's because you didn't look well. Will you follow cancer? You didn't hear me. Okay, you are angry. Are you sure you're not angry? 
I want grammar loan down. I want go need the message to preach. I will not have a one more. This is just my short story. We'll continue next month. Don't let me go into this. Don't let me go into this. Don't let me go into this. Oh. Give me two minutes. Sir, is it wrong for a brother to date two sisters or more? Because apart from receiving, we must watch characters. You are a thief, really. <laughs> Now, listen, listen. You know what? where this brother got it wrong? You don't start relationship with relationship. You start with friendship. For instance, we are church members. You are taking your time to observe. Do you understand what I'm, I'm saying? You get a little bit closer. You can visit yourself. Please concentrate, those of you at the back. You visit, you know, you take time to watch the person. It is when you watch to a point, you now feel it's like this person, this person, this thing. Some, something is drawing us closer. Now, and those days of watching, it's not something you just watch in one month, two months, three months. But that of time too, depending on how, it depends on you. Because there are people who, who saw themselves in one month, they got married. Depends on the leading you have. But just make sure that if you are not satisfied with character, I've told you, what you marry in marriage is character. Every other thing can fade. But what you marry in marriage is character. Take time to observe character. Not finance. Not body built. Not uh, his face, beautiful face. Character. Once you are satisfied with character, you go ahead. Don't date two people. You have one in redeem. You have one in winners. Another one in God's power. Sir, Bible says he that desire the post of a leader, of a leader, bishop, must be a husband of one wife. I am just a church member, not a leader. <laughs> Nor do I desire it. Can't I marry two wives? Matthew 19 from verse 1. Please put it on screen. Let's help him to answer it. Matthew 19. From verse 1. Let me read the second question. I am not putting my wife away. I am not divorcing her. I just want to marry another wife. <laughs> because Jesus said, whoever divorces his wife and marry another commits sin. But <laughs> this person is a scholar. <laughs> Okay, let's look at this. Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these sayings, that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea, beyond the Jordan. Fast, 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 fast. And great multitude followed him, and he healed them there. Fast. Then the Pharisees came to him, testing him and saying to him, you are laughing, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And what was his response? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning, made them how many? Made them male and female. Not males and females. Not male and females. Move on. Move on. And said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to what? His wife. How many wives? What? Not wives. And the two shall become what? One. Move on. He didn't finish there. So then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put separate. We have not yet finished. Move on. Verse 7. They said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and put her away? Verse 8. Verse 8. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, Permit you to divorce your wives. But what? But from the beginning, it was what? It was not so. 
So it's not biblical. Let me tell you one true life story. I was I met I was talking to somebody just of recent. So his first wife to marry the second. And me, hear me. I've heard from Baba Biara many years ago that if you leave your first wife, if you leave a woman to marry another one, you will encounter what is worse than the one you left. He said this. So Baba Biara told us how a man left a, the wife, married another, left that one, married another. When they now ask him, Oh, Boda, who might he tell you who carry? Tell to fair fair by. I'm on to be only a woman, me a coco. Igbati mo fe file. Mo ro pe angeli satanin. Chukbo igbati mo wa fe keji. Mo wa kwa de pe aburo satanin mo fe. Igbati mo wa file ti mo wa riketai. Ti mo tu file satanin ele. Baba la onwa be lo we ki e to ba wa gbe se ki ku ni je ki ya satanin lo. Now, this young man too that I was counseling just of recent left his first wife for the second wife. And this time when he was going for the second, he went for that, okay, this one I will not marry this. I will not get married to an educated. My first one was educated. I will not marry as educated. Maybe education was a problem. Made that proud. Went, went to an illiterate. But you know what he told me last week? This illiterate, when she is angry on her case, she will break windscreen. When she is angry, she will lock her husband into the room. The man said, sir, my first wife was better. Now, this is the third man, third man I have counseled. In fact, one was telling me, he said, sir, this one was telling me, the second wife, the wife he, he married, used broom to beat him from <laughs> leg. And he can say, "Cool, no, no, he can say, cool, no." He always fight, but like, oh, dev, oh, dev. You know what the man told me? Only ya who meet him officially and lay. Who fear Jamie by? Money kill him, you know, one lot. Whatsoever you have with your first wife, you better say to it. Because whatsoever you didn't conquer in your first marriage, we grow in the second one. Let's rest our case here. Are you blessed? Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. Let the choir lead us. That's the last thing we are doing today.